Hello everyone! So, I wanted to make this video as an addendum to the reflections video that I made a little while ago because this is something that I've been dabbling with a little bit and I think it's very uh, important and I think it will add a lot to the conversation when it comes to reflections that can be done inside Source Filmmaker. So, I just want to get some disclaimers out of the way first. First of all, this is not something that will probably work with every condition you throw at it, so things like when lighting is uh, very complex in terms of radius or other things like that. I don't know how well it deals with samples and depth of field, things like that, so um, try to take this and apply it to situations where it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but still it's a lot more pre precise than the technique that I showed before in the last video, which is more than more like a fun little trick to do with some uh, in some specific situations. So, basically, what I'm going to teach you is all about light probes. So, if you don't know, which I'm sure you do if you have some knowledge in, of how source or the source engine works, uh, there are things called cube maps, and cube maps are a way of faking reflections. They basically are pictures taken of the environment around a model and they are used uh, and mapped onto surfaces of the model. They are stationary, they are completely, you know, they're just images, they're not updating, they're not changing with the environment, they're just there to make things look pretty so it doesn't feel like things are too out of, out of context in the scene, in the environment. We can play with that. There are ways of making your own environmental maps or your own cube, ma cube maps, which is literally just to take pictures of the environment and sort of build them together into uh, a texture that can be applied to materials like these ones. Um, but we're not going to do that. Well, we're not going to do necessarily that. We're going to do something a little bit different that is much more automated, quick, and as I said, doesn't work with every single situation, but should be pretty useful. So first things first. Uh, you're gonna have a model. In this case, I have two just to show how uh, this works, uh, also in including other entities in the scene. Uh, in this case, I have two models, they're exactly the same, doesn't matter, uh, that have these large reflective surfaces, that's why I chose them. Um, and I know that they also have environmental maps, cube maps baked into the textures. So this is something that if your material doesn't have, I'll also include a little bit of a, uh, an article in the description to show you how to actually enable uh, env maps or cube maps to your models if they don't have any. Um, most reflective materials do have cube maps inserted into the settings, but that's stuff that you're going to have to f figure out and I'm going to give you some guidance in the description. So I know that this material does have an environmental map, Mostly because when I move around it, I can see that there are some reflections on it, but I know for a fact that those reflections do not actually represent what is around the model. They are simply there to make things look a bit prettier, uh, but if you look, they don't actually reflect of each other. Um, this is a problem for uh, posters and images, so I'm going to show you a way to fix that. So, what you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to take a camera, which I already did, you're going to have to take a camera and you're going to have to place it inside the sort of point of view of the reflective surface. In this case, it's going to be where the head is. So I know that the reflections are going to be whatever the head sees in a 360 sort of way. So I'm going to place the camera right inside the head and then I'm going to hide this model. So right now if I look around you're going to see that there's nothing to block the view, only the environment. So I'm going to place my camera sort of relatively forward, doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm going to do something very interesting here. I'm going to go to the console and I'm going to type light probe. And then I'm going to give it a name. It doesn't really matter what name you give it, as long as you remember it. In this case, I'm going to give it like video one, doesn't matter. And then the resolution, which we want is five. 512, which is sort of the highest it can really go, um, and I'm going to press enter. And after a little bit of waiting, 
you're gonna see this little notification here. If you, everything you did was correct, you should get this notification, these six little lines of code that tell you that there have been made the screenshots of the environment and they are now able to be used as a cube map. However, first things first is we have to restart Source Filmmaker. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I am back. Things are the same as I left them. So I'm just going to re-enable the, um, the model that I used, which was this one. I have, you know, uh, re-enabled him. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the cube map of this visor with the one we just created and that's really easy. So first things first, right click the model here on the viewer and add override materials. This is going to allow us to edit the materials on the fly. And then right click again, show in element viewer, model. In here you're going to go all the way down to materials and you're going to expand that. These are all of the materials that this model uses. We're going to have to find out which one works for the visor. In this case, whoever made this model, which uh, I will put in the description as well, was very kind to name all of these materials very well so they know that this is in fact a visor. And what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to right click this material, add an attribute, which is a string. And now what we're going to have to do is, we are going to have to Oh, uh, string. Okay, you're gonna have to name this string dollar sign env map. And whoa, something just happened. That means that now it's looking for a material to use as the env map, as a cube map. It's not finding any because we haven't set it as any. So now we're gonna set it as this light probes back, uh, backslash forward slash. I don't know. Uh, and then whatever you named it, in my case it was video1, underscore HDR. It has to be always like this. The only thing you're going to change is the name to the name that you gave your reflections, your images, your screenshots. And then you click enter. Now as you can see it's a bit dark, so we can change that. Or if it's a bit too bright we can also change that. Right click again, add attribute, float. A dollar sign and map tent. It's gone, don't worry. Just change this number here from zero to whatever you want. If you make it too high, it's gonna be too bright. So just try to find like a little sweet spot. Uh, if I make it number one, it might look decent, but it's a bit too bright, I think. So I'm gonna make it like 0 0.25. Um, as you can see, the reflection here uh, it looks pretty good. It's a bit stretched because of the way the, the, the helmet is, is, you know, it is a bit stretched. Um, the helmet is very vertical, so the reflections are going to be stretched a little bit. Um, but an issue you might come across is that, well, when you move the character, the reflection stays. Well, that's because it's using a screenshot as the reflection. It's not using, like, a, a, an adaptive thing that is always changing. So, this is something that you would do when you already have the entire scene laid out and you want reflections in certain materials so you do this whole process for each material and making sure that reflections are good for each uh, specific point of view without it changing it cannot change otherwise it's not going to look good otherwise it's going to be out of sync so um i think this is sort of it um this is sort of how just this whole thing works um I'm gonna be showing you guys now some like compilations of some uh, other models that I've added the end map to so you can see how they look. I think they look pretty good. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a quickie just so I can get this out of the way. This is an addendum to my uh, latest uh, reflections video and if you guys have any questions let me know. But that's it everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.